Hello everybody, welcome to the Eternal Spoiler Breakdown. My name is Pojo, and we have a lot of cards to cover. There were a bunch released. I was saving uh, the setup until we got like a few more than three, and then we got like 12 more, so got plenty of cards to go through. Uh, quick announcements before we start. Uh, one, I have an interview up with Trail Stories. That's on the uh, Reddit, and you can probably find the link on my Twitter or in my YouTube description for this video. Um, so if you want to go check that out, like we did do an interview, so that was fun to do and really like went very in depth and had a lot of fun with it so uh feel free to see that number two we're officially announcing our patreon starting i think sunday um i I'm, i did qualify for the top 64 so we're going to be practicing and playing for that as well while making our video but like uh, yeah we, we will have that launched and announced like in full but the patreon is already up so if you want to go check it out then um uh yeah it's up at patreon.com slash so uh, those are all the major things. Let's get into the cards. There's a lot of cool things, and we have a new mechanic. So first off, we've got Ravid, Insect Master. Uh, summon 5-4, play a power card of your choice from your deck. Empower play a 1-1 one, one Humbug with Flying. Uh, this card is a sort of time-shifted forward uh, version of Marison's Disciple, which uh, you can see in the cards Marison's Disciple and Humbug Swarm. Um, he, you know, has clearly sort of mastered the art of playing around with humbugs and doing ridiculous nonsense, and a really unusual legendary as far as things go. I think this thing might actually be a lot stronger than it looks. Like, uh, for a while I wasn't sure, but like looking at it, I'm, I'm feeling pretty okay about what's going on with it. So, has a pretty poor stat line, but you have to count the fact that it plays a 1 1 humbug with. With its own unit. So as a 7 cost, it's a 5-4 plus a 1-1, one, one. so about a 6-5 worth of stats per 7. Not amazing in and of itself. It plays a power card of your choice from your deck, which ramps you to 8 or 9, and it is a power card of your choice, so it's specific fixing, which means that you can get something of a particular color, you can set yourself up in like TJP for your 8 of the Hurus and your channel the Tempests, you can do all sorts of interesting shenanigans. Uh, thank you to GDPSSP for one year of subs, oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. But, uh, like, basically, you get to just do ridiculous nonsense with it and, like, fix for all of your really, really big greedy decks. So if you're playing this in, like, an Iron Thorn Brew, like, something along the lines of what we like to play, uh, Robin might actually have a pretty decent spot there. The Empower ability continues to play Humbugs with Flying, which gives you a win con in control-based matchups. Basically, you get a lot of little flyers. Those guys block the big flyers and also help you out, like, in a lot of other situations. Like, this is something that keeps Champion of Cunning and Rezon off of you a little bit and like sort of alleviates the pressure just a tad overall it's not like a hugely important thing about the card but the fact that it is doing so many different things from so many different angles is something to watch for. I think overall the card's just a little bit weakly statted for what it's doing, but there is some potential in large control decks with a lot of colors in them that Robin will have a lot of fun. And he also triggers Empowers, which considering there's an Empower theme in the upcoming set, uh, I think that's actually pretty relevant because he plays the power card when he's played, which is good if you want to like play it right after Mystic Ascendant, and it also is something that like allows you to use all other Empowers and get you to like really really big stuff so all interesting all sort of cool this guy's pretty sort of um yeah just attacking a lot of different axes seems to do a lot of cool things okay so let's talk about oh first things first uh we did get a, an announcement from uh lsv about uh eternal's new right to uh bear arms uh, that is a Rakano card, plus one, plus one, and when you play a unit, it gets another plus one, plus one. So, reasonable draft weapon, also potentially strong and ranked if you're playing the right kind of uh, Rakano aggro deck. This card is delightful. There's not too much to say about it, except that it is like very good at making very, very big units out of very, very small units. And so, it probably belongs in a fast-paced Rakano aggro deck, which we haven't seen the likes of in a while. A lot of the Rakano decks right now are sort of mid-rangey. They kind of rely on getting to Unseen Commando and then playing around sort of the big flyers like Valkyrie and Unseen, as opposed to playing on those like Rakano Outlaws and Crown Watch Paladins. Bear Arms is something that sort of belongs back in that like one to two drop slot where it gets you a lot of strength, it gives you something that like protects you from hailstorms and does some other interesting shenanigans. You can probably get Bear Arms to do pretty ridiculous things. Uh, I'm not sure about it, but it seems like as a way to just grow your units constantly, there's definitely a Rakano deck that wants to play this. Uh, and yeah, in draft this card is actually like a really worthy pick because it's probably going to get you a lot of stats for very little struggle and that's pretty worth it if you can get it going 
Okay. So we have our new mechanic, which is Pledge. Let me go ahead and pick a Pledge card that's not too bad. Yeah, we'll go for Lethry Intimidator. So Pledge is on your first turn, you can play this card as a power of its particular color. So if you are on your first turn and you have a Lethry Intimidator in hand, you can pledge the card as a Shadow Sigil. So basically that means that if you have a decent amount of Pledge cards, you're probably always going to have two to three power hands for control decks. Uh, a lot of mid-rangey styles will really, really like this. You'll be able to fix influence for certain types of color pairings and certain types of tricolor sets. So lots of cool things that you can do with Pledge that will actually get you some decent results, and that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, similar to Crests from the previous sets, uh, this these cards are really, really good at helping you solve the basic problem of being power screwed. And with the new Desperate Mulligan, as well as the Pledge cards and the Crests, I think at this point it's going to be pretty hard to get into any sort of like non-games in Eternal where you just don't have anything to do. Pledge cards Cards aren't particularly strong like usually when they are played, but as pledges they are pretty good, and then they fill out the board pretty well with the pledge, so that can be pretty handy too. Lothry Intimidator gives you a nice little rally effect with its empowers, so you can do some interesting shenanigans with that. The stat line for it is not very good, so it's better as a pledge than as other things, but if you are playing in an empower-based deck, then you probably want some extra power, so Lothry Intimidator is a pretty good place to go for it. And we have confirmed that uh, empower is now a shadow, time, and justice faction setup so that's looking pretty exciting like i actually think that empower kind of fits the shadow setup so uh we are going to see some interesting shadow empower decks and i'm kind of excited to see how that goes ah my throat's giving way but we shall continue okay so yeah, uh, basically pledge cards can be either like very, very simple and very, very effective. Like Coastal Recruit is a card that you would absolutely pick up and draft um, fairly highly. Like I would say that you value this higher than most three drop three threes and three drop three threes are generally pretty important. Um, these cards really fix you up in draft and having a couple of pledges is gonna be very important for your curve. Uh, it just makes your curve better and makes it more reliable and allows you to just get into a better shape better shape where you can actually get the influence and power that you need for things that you want. Um, but they can also be like really, really complicated cards where if you get them in the first hand, you're very, very likely to pledge them immediately, like Forgeborn here. That's a 7-7 seven, seven Overwhelm with pay 9 to give Forgeborn plus 2 this turn for each of your units. It's a neat little uh, win con that you can give charge to and maybe do like some interesting shenanigans with, but the main thing that you really want to do with it is like either pledge it away or play it later on to just sort of have a big finisher at the end of the game. So solving two problems. One, when you're flooded out at the top, Forgeborn solves that issue because you get to play something at the top in top deck mode that actually wins the game. Two, when you're uh, completely mana shrunk at the bottom, then like basically any time that you don't have enough power, Forgeborn turns into a power on the first turn and helps you out there. So these cards are a lot stronger than they look in practice. Like you can see that they're not statted particularly well for what they're doing. Like a seven cost seven seven overwhelm is fine and certainly not a bad card, but it's also like you know it, you can see that it doesn't do quite as much as a lot of seven drops. So it's something that you have to pay attention to. But these are the cards that are actually going to be like really staple and help you fix up like basically make your decks work. So pay attention to them because they are really, really good. Don't forget to put some pledges in your decks. I think that they're actually going to be really, really relevant. Other pledges include Infused Guardian, an endurance unit with Empower plus one plus one. I actually really like this one for the overall stat line that it grants. Like as a four, 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 five, it's not amazing, but it's got endurance, so it's hard to kill. And then the Empower ability turns it into a very, very big unit over time. That's pretty classic Combre midrange style. Like this card will be perfectly fine alongside Awakened Suit and Mystic Ascendant for a big like Empower based deck. Could be really fun and really, really powerful draft card. Lots of cool stuff going on there. Um, let's see here. What other pledges do we have? There's one that is the last one, and I want to make sure that, that we actually do have that one be last. And I think we've actually gone through the rest. So yeah, we'll go ahead and talk about that one next. Uh, we have a new Scion, and it is a new Eileen. Uh, may I introduce you to Eileen, the Rising Storm? All right. Now here's a power pledge card. Uh, this card is eight cost for a six twelve. Uh, summon, deal six damage to an enemy. Ultimate, the third time Island attacks, she deals 12 damage to each enemy. Uh, important thing to note, this Island does not have flying. I almost uh, forgot about that. Oh, there's a flyer that draws cards with a pledge? All right, we'll have to find it. That's okay. We'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> 
Anyways, uh, oh yeah, I know what it is. It's Shadowlands Border Scout. I think we do have that in here. Um, okay, so Eilin, the Rising Storm. Um, so right off the bat, this card is a really, really ridiculous stat line unit that is very, very hard to kill and kills cards like Heart of the Vault, Sandstorm Titan, any sort of six drop six six, it'll sort of knock that out of the park and basically just be a really, really good card on board. It's also got a lot of health, which means that if your opponent is like one of those Rindra's Choice heavy decks or if they have like some sort of particular setup where they just don't really have a way to kill a 6-12, um, like this card will stick on the board for a really, really long time. That's pretty critical, especially since that ultimate there allows her to just finish the game if she's attacking every turn. So giving her like Endurance with Infinite Hourglass or Accelerated Evolution allows you to do some pretty cool things. You can put Endurance weapons on her and do ridiculous nonsense. Uh, like this card is crazy good at sort of sticking out on board. Uh, she's also an Eilin, which helps you if you are playing... Um, <laughs> the uh, enemy of my enemy card. Uh, this is the most survivable Eilin that you can play and certainly seems like she should be able to sort of stick the board and actually get some damage and value out. I think this card kind of feels like a really good replacement for Channel the Tempest in the 8 slot. Like, it does a lot of damage, it generates a lot of different like ways to win, and it takes a lot to kill. So like, it's really, really difficult to get rid of this card. Uh, if you do annihilate it, yuck, but like, you can certainly get this card out and do some crazy crazy stuff with it and if you can resurrect it or cheat it out in some way then you get pretty good results for your money so I would say this is definitely not a bad choice as far as power goes. I love the art. Island's card art has been great so far and I'm pretty excited to see if there's going to be another set of monocolored scions because it kind of seems like we might see all five of them again or maybe we'll just see a couple. Like we might see the Triumvirate, uh, Island, Caleb, and Vara. I would be really... I would really suspect another Caleb, just because Enemy of, my, Enemy of My Enemy was a card that was printed, and because Island, Vara, and Caleb all have, like, slightly new things going on. So, yeah. This is good, good stuff. Um, oh yeah, and the card does play well with End of Hostilities, of course. Eilin plays well with this card. I'd say the best thing about Eilin is that she plays well with the other Eilin, which is really, really nice, like the 6-7 Eilin for 7. I think you've got some really cool options for mid-rangey blue stuff, and you can do some really neat things with that. Okay, there was another Empower unit, Shadowlands Border Scout. Draws a card for each damage dealt. Um, that is pretty neat. Uh, good pledge overall. The flying ability is fine. Like, again, this card feels very, very strong in draft. It's got some shenanigans available in ranked, but I don't think it's very powerful in ranked just because it's pretty hard to, like, actually keep it alive long enough. But if you can sneak it out, if you can Haunting Scream it, if you can do something to actually increase that attack power permanently for Haunting Scream decks, then, yeah, there's definitely a deck that'll just use it and use it and use it. Um, like, I think anything where you can just get the Shadowlands Borders get strength up and not get it silenced in the void, um, that's a really disgusting Haunting Scream deck. So, could be a replacement for the pretty common Gorgon Fanatic, uh, but I think overall, like, just a pretty solid card, so. Okay, okay. <coughs> wow, my voice is going. Uh, let's, let's talk about the rest. There's a couple that we'll probably miss. We have Makeshift Barrier. We don't know what it does yet. Um, also, apparently the art for this one is just huge. Pretty big. <laughs> uh, this is a 0-3 Endurance for 3 that transforms on 3 into a Whirly Twirly. We don't know what a Whirly Twirly is, so can't really say much about this card yet, except to say that a 0-5 Endurance for 3 is not that great. Uh, the card can transform back into a Makeshift Barrier, which allows you to shed Permafrosts and other things that might actually shut down Makeshift Barrier's Whirly Twirly, which we would assume is some sort of flyer or really, really complicated engine machine. I'm interested to see what happens with this card. Uh, we'll find out in a bit but uh, nothing to say about it yet. Uh, notable, yeah, it's notably like the first thing that you cast, so it costs six to get the Whirly Twirly, and yeah, we'll see if that's whatever that is is going to be good enough. My guess is that it's going to be a pretty high damage flyer of some kind with an interesting ability. Hey, thanks Yada, and uh, yeah, thanks for all the congrats on the top 64. I'm very, very happy. All right, um, so uh, Psycholis, the Burning Sand is our another pledge card. Charge Overwhelm and Pledge. I don't know what stream this came from, but clearly it came from a stream. Uh, summon Psycholis is invulnerable to damage this turn. So straight up, Psycholis deals like five damage to face with a 
pretty decent frequency. So it's kind of a burn card in time and a pretty aggressive one at that. I think this card has got a lot of potential. Um, the pledge ability is really useful for getting to four drops. I think uh, pledge in time is actually just really, really good. And this card gets back uh, Dawnwalkers. It does some really ridiculous things. And just good charge cards in time feel like a pretty good deal. So I would say that him, his ability to be invulnerable is pretty handy to just make this into a fairly aggressive burn card that forces your opponent to keep blockers back in situations where they are low on health. Um, you can do some cool stuff with this and like overall looks like a pretty exciting mage. Uh, I'm pretty delighted to see it, so yeah, hopefully we'll get something cool out of it. All right, probably the most powerful card that we've seen so far, Display of Instinct. Uh, this one also has very, very big art and a lovely, lovely setup. Uh, I think we're looking at a Praxis Obelisk of some kind being discovered by an explorer. So yeah, pretty, pretty standard for instinct. Uh, it looks a little like Stone Scar because there's like the mining and the digging. But yeah, no, that's definitely an explorer. Oh, not, not quite what I'm trying to do. Some of these arts are bigger than the others. Okay, deal four damage to an enemy. So a mortar for three. Put one of your units into your hand and gain its health. That's a pretty ridiculous way to save a unit and also get a lot of health out of the bargain. Or negate an enemy spell for three. And just any enemy spell. It's pretty ridiculous. Um, if you're in three colors, you're playing Display of Instinct. Um, like, I think that Time, uh, Fire, Primal will love this card. There's just way too many cool things to do with it. It also is a three color charm, which... Um, yeah, that means that there's a set of these, and they're all going to be nonsense. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of heavy push to make three-color decks happen in Defiance, so you're going to see some pushed cards in exactly those colors, and this one is definitely a ranked staple. It's going to be really, really ridiculous. Uh, it does deal damage to an enemy. It's not the enemy, so it is basically just any unit that you can kill. You can kill it with Display of Instinct. Um... I think the save ability is going to be more handy than it looks. It's not the primary mode or the mode that you most want to use, but all three of these modes are very, very good. So yeah, this card is ridiculous. Uh, there's not too much to say about it except that it's just going to be like a four of in every three color deck in red yellow and blue um so yeah i'm pretty excited for it it opens up a lot of possibilities maybe we'll actually see some like um curiox decks um the six six bunch of moment of creation decks will come back i'm guessing might see some really really cool things so uh yeah like that's gonna be delightful um are those all of the major ones? There's one more, Secret Passage. I'm not a huge fan of this card. Uh, it's a pay one for an unblockable until end of turn on one of your units. And then once per turn, you make pay two to give one of your units unblockable and sacrifice it at the end of turn. This card is really, really non-interactive, of course. It specifically, you know, encourages you to sneak through a bunch of infiltrates and get a lot of really ridiculous nonsense through. Uh, I would say that overall, that's going to be very powerful. It's also going to be really obnoxious. Uh, I think it's probably worth playing in ranked and draft-wise. It's got some pretty good possibilities if you want to get your Beast Collars or your Beast Collars Amulets or or any ridiculous infiltrates through that could do some nasty, nasty things. Um, uh, of course, you do lose the unit at the end of the turn, so be careful with it, but one cost for unblockable is already decent, and Secret Passage definitely does that in a very, very good ways. This card is absurd. Um, I, I don't actually like how cheap and easy it is to play, uh, but uh, that's okay. Like It seems like it's nonetheless going to be a really interesting way to invoke some very, very fun, sneaky stuff, so we'll definitely play with it. And I bet we'll have some pretty, has some, have a lot of fun with it. So pretty exciting stuff. So yeah, that, uh, that I think is all of them. Uh, so that should be it for today. I'm going to be back online tomorrow uh, for the final tournament. Uh, we're going to be playing in that tournament. And then afterwards, I think we'll be doing our announcement for the Patreon. So I am pretty excited about it, and uh, I I hope that uh, you guys are as well. Uh, Defiance is looking amazing. There's so many cool cards available and like just a lot of decent stuff getting printed. I think this is definitely going to sweep the meta in some really cool ways. So like it's looking great. Uh, I'm very, very happy to see how things are going. And like, yeah, I mean, Eternal's been knocking it out of the park for a solid year now. Like, I, I haven't seen anything that's been like, oh, this this is bad. Like, they've made great changes. They've had good cards. The set releases have been good. The draft environment has been amazing for a really long time. Sealed environment is feeling pretty good right now. Like, every change that they make just feels positive and great. And like, these cards all look fantastic. I'm very, very excited to see them. So yeah, I'm 
super happy about where we're at, and I hope you guys are as, uh, enjoying the stream and enjoying the channel. Uh, we are up with a bunch more stuff. Uh, look for the Patreon announcement tomorrow, and thank you guys so much for watching. See you all later. Cheers.